The dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate for the stormy present. We can succeed only by concert. Abraham Lincoln, 1862. Lincoln's voice is still celebrated in the spoken word, the written word, even in music. Composer Aaron Copland introduced this quotation in the narrative for his composition titled, A Lincoln Portrait. I speak to you today from the perspective of my 70th year as an avid reader and book lover, a student of cultural history, a lector in pastoral studies, and a fledgling writer. I look back on the many voices from my past, voices that spoke to me, defined me, challenged me, inspired me to seek and find my own voice. Yet, many of us hear voices that are conflicting, contradictory. Children should be seen and not heard. Yet, don't raise your voice to me, but speak up. Use your words. Amid a cacophony of competing voices, a palpable divide exists, worsened by extreme polarization and perhaps the most divisive political climate in my lifetime, where Lincoln's words are more relative than ever relative to our stormy present, calling into question those dogmas of a not-so-quiet past. How can we lend our voice for the common good for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s beloved community? Is it really a question of whether we want to or rather or should we? Should we? Must we continue only preaching to the choir? Or can we reach beyond the choir? Preaching to the choir, by definition, it means to pointlessly try to convince a person or group to accept an opinion that they already agree with. The idea of a preacher ministering to the converted. How can we get beyond the choir with our own friends and family when even among friends and family there are words that remain unspoken, words unchallenged, words excused? It's more than just the crazy relative we may have to put up with once a year at Thanksgiving. And I can see you all out there thinking of who that is in your own families. <laughs> sadly, sadly, the reality is we are not talking with each other. We're talking at each other if we're talking at all. So how do we get beyond the choir? Think with me for a moment about a choir. I'm sure many of you are or have been members of one at some point in your lives. I am honored to be a member of the Ocala Symphony Orchestra Chorus, known for our annual performance of Handel's Messiah. A choir's performance, though, is more than simply singing the right notes, more than synchronizing the voices of soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. A choir ultimately creates harmony. So indeed, to reach beyond the choir is to seek harmony. How? I would suggest by practicing sila. Sila, the original Hebrew word, appears over 70 times in 39 of the Psalms, Psalms that were intended to be sung, often accompanied by musical instruments. So what does Selah mean? Theologians and biblical scholars still ponder definitions that remain fluid, perhaps some kind of musical instruction. 
But my favorite interpretation comes from Episcopal priest Father Michael Marsh in his sermon blog, Interrupting the Silence. Father Marsh describes sila as an instruction to slow down, pause, reflect, stop, and listen, allow silence so as to create a space, an opening, a connection between what went before and what is coming next. So indeed, to give voice beyond the choir through Sila is to take what I would suggest three steps. Number one, to connect. Number two, to pause and be silent. Number three, to listen. 2020 has been an extraordinary year, a year not only of a viral pandemic, but what many are calling a pandemic of the spirit, a year where the voices of John Lewis and Ruth Bader Ginsburg were silenced. The interlude earlier this year of the global pandemic shutdown, a time we introverts embraced, but for far, far too many a time of incredible hardship and heartache that for many has yet to abate. We all have an innate desire to be heard. Yet too often, it is the extremes on either side with the loudest voices and trying to get a word in edgewise nearly impossible. How do we begin to connect, to truly hear each other, or more accurately, the other? As Maya Angelou so eloquently said, words mean more than what is set down on paper. It takes the human voice to infuse them with deeper meaning. Ah, the human voice. I read aloud to my son Joseph before he was even born. Wonderful letters from my dear mother, who we lost to cancer over 20 years ago. Yet, with the advent of the internet, and cell phones, and texting, and messaging, and email, and social media, and Facebook, and Twitter, and Snapchat, and Instagram, and something my grandchildren call TikTok. <laughs> and of course, the saving grace of the ubiquitous Zoom. Mom's handwritten letters seem quaint, and my dear late father, who passed away at the age of 90 years young for his entire life, only used a landline telephone. What all this access has done, though, is create a degree of separation and distance, even anonymity, that has led to disconnect, to incivility, to even outright cruelty, saying things via social media that we would not dream or dare to say in person or face to face. None of which leads to the conversation so desperately needed. All of which leads to an ever deepening cultural chasm. As did the psalmist. Perhaps it's time for us to conclude all our emails and text messages with that one word, sila, as a cue for our next step in this process to pause and be silent. Author Colm McCann, whose latest novel is A Paragon, suggests even silence is a form of speaking. And yet, as he writes further, you soon find out how loud the silence really is. Everything unsaid leads eventually to what is said. If we but pause and be silent, maybe, 
just maybe we can begin to create that space for a shift away from this cultural chasm, this echo chamber that is preaching to the choir. To hear the impassioned voices questioning systemic racism, challenging ingrained beliefs and attitudes around white privilege as but one significant example. That leads to voices of discomfort, denial, fear, anger. These too must be addressed and acknowledged. And that leads us to our third step in practicing sila, to listen. The Sufi poet Rumi tells us there is a voice that doesn't use words. Listen. I held elected office as a county commissioner and represented a very rural district that encompassed the 4,000 plus acre Ocala National Forest the largest geographically, the smallest in population, obviously more trees than people. As I began attending meetings, community meetings in the district, the chairman of one of the advisory councils admonished, while we appreciate your being here, you are from the heart of the city of Ocala. You have no idea what our needs are out here. And he was right. The closest I had come to anything about the Ocala National Forest prior to my election was in reading Marjorie Canan Rawlings' The Yearling. Talk about not preaching to the choir. But I kept showing up every month, attending one of six different community meetings, listening to their concerns, often bringing the staff experts with me, trying to implement and effect needed change. At the end of my four-year term, the advisory council where I began hosted a dinner in my honor and named me their person of the year, a recognition I cherish deeply. But what I cherish most were that same chairman's parting words. You proved me wrong, he said. You are the only commissioner to have ever given us a voice. To connect, to pause and be silent, to listen. Not by chance, the words listen and silent are an anagram. Same letters, different words. But perhaps connected in meaning by concert nonetheless. For Lincoln told us we can succeed only by concert. And by concert, by definition, means by agreement, by harmony. So in embracing sila, we can move toward that harmony that is beyond the choir, to pause, to be silent, to listen, so as to connect to ourselves, to each other, to those with whom we agree, our fellow choir posse, but especially to those with whom we may be estranged due to diametrically opposing views. Channeling what Lincoln called our better angels toward Dr. King's beloved community. And then we may just find our own voice as the psalmist celebrated in Psalm 3, verse 4. I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. Selah. Thank you.